fellow watchers, and who done it in Giants. Ash and Piggy here from Watching Wolford bring you Who Done It, the Who Killed Lucy Beal podcast. It's episode number three, and today's episode is going to cover the biggest storylines and takeaways from week three of 2024. All the episodes from the 13th of <laughs> January 2014. 2014. Sorry, I had, I had to correct. I had to. <laughs> Uh, the worst, the uh, worst bit is, I was I was genuinely about to be like, all right, don't say twenty forty, don't say twenty twenty four, don't say twenty twenty four, twenty twenty four. Fuck. All the episodes no, no, from the thirteenth you... of January, twenty fourteen, all the way to the seventeenth of January, twenty fourteen. I wasn't gonna correct. I wasn't gonna correct you, but I was like, he's so confident that it's twenty twenty four. So it's just like. Because like, usually when you do these intros, you're like, hello, fellow watchers and enjoyers, blah, 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 blah. Welcome to 2024. Like, you're so energized in doing it. So <laughs> I just, I was like, it was like we were jumping off the edge of a cliff into water. And you're like, <clears throat> hold on, lads. Hold on, lads. I fucking got this. You jump and then you slow. Then you just hit your foot on the way down. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, I still done it, lads. But yeah, but yeah, yeah. it's uh, it is 2014. Technically not wrong. It is 2024, the Lord's year, but not in which the EastEnders we're covering. Yeah. Um, this podcast essentially acts as an excuse to go through the Who Killed Lucy Beale storyline and mostly just have an excuse to watch more EastEnders, get some more time because that the the 2014 to 2016 period it's a pretty fucking good time, you know. And it has been very fun to get to get to grips with it. Obviously, we know who killed Lucy, but it's not about it's not about knowing who. It's about knowing how. Everybody it's... asks who killed Lucy, but nobody asks how killed Lucy. See what I mean? <laughs> I'm in shock without the S. Exactly. Um, um but. Yeah, we, we know who killed Lucy, lads. All right, you don't need to keep telling us we know who killed Lucy. We know. But the illu- we're not supposed to break the illusion. Yeah, exactly. But in the illusion, we're in 2014. I know we're in 2024 because we're both fucking grown up. Because at this time, Ash would be 13 and I'd be 10. Yes. Yeah. Well, what do you expect a fucking 10-year-old and a 13-year-old to do? It's going, hello, fellas and enjoyers. I mean, I'm sure 13 year old me would be telling you that Bex Fowler is absolutely stunning <laughs> at the time. And, uh, Teenage and crush. I'm sure te- Not anymore. And I'm just- <laughs> <laughs> when she's an adult in the show, great. <laughs> Not now. Not now. <laughs> um, I'm just making it clear, guys. I'm, I, 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 I liked her when I was a child. When I was a child, guys. When I was a child. <laughs> Look, all right, we're the same age, me and Bex, in the story. I was on October yeah. 5th, and she was on October 26th. So, how about that? Dick. But, but, yeah, this, this like, it just it let, us in, or let us believe the illusion. It's like we cover ECW well, 2006 or well, one more match. I would say, the but point no one... is, we're not doing this to kind of, we're doing this basically as an excuse to watch all these tenders and as an excuse for the viewers to, to be like, oh, bloody hell, 20, 2014. Ugh. Let's just uncork that fucking time capsule. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Terry. Oh, oh, God, not Terry. <laughs> oh, David Wick. Oh. Um, Mick, oh. Fat boy. Oh, well, yeah. Bring it back. Mm. Um, I well, suppose we didn't actually discuss what storylines we were going to talk about, but as a whole, there are a couple that I've I've picked up, and if they're shit, we'll just not do them. Um, first storyline is Shabnam is back, uh, and this kind of coincides with Masood's downward spiral, as well as Carol, you know, having being diagnosed with breast cancer. Um. Phil telling Sharon that he's the reason that Dennis died. And finally, someone in the Jacksons household is pregnant, and it's all about trying to figure out who. And we generally don't know who it is. Well, no, I don't anyway. No, no idea. 
I, generally, I, I haven't this thought is about not it too heavily, but like, no fucking clue at all, no. Like, um, like guys, we're, we're not even joking here. We generally don't know. Please don't tell us. But yeah. by the time you tell us, it'll be really, it'll be probably be recording the, the week it's announced. Um, but it's yeah, at least tomorrow. Oh fuck! Oh, please don't tell us till next week, please, please, <laughs> please. Um, Down for some guy in the comments being like, "It's Terry Ledge." Fuck off. <laughs> But yeah, Fuck I off. suppose before we before we continue onwards with this, just normal standard podcast procedure, just in case people get worried, it's not half an hour this time. Simple. How's it going? How you been? Oh, I've been good, you know, just been good. At this time, I'm trying to think of no, this before. This is before uh, round. So just to give context, I know this is not our wrestling channel, but just for a little context, I'm going to see can I brain quiz myself. I think at this time. Batista's returning in wrestling, and his run is, <laughs> it's going to be shit. It is one um, of the runs of all time. It, 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 it's not a bad run, but it's not a good run. And he's there to basically promote Guardians of the Galaxy near the end, and it's like, you brought him back, what are you doing? And he fucks off. But yeah, at this time, I will be preparing myself to watch the Royal Rumble 2014 run this time. And little did I know that it was going to be a shit event. But, yeah, I'm doing good. How are you? Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's it's get it's getting back into the routine of this. This is second week running. Back. Full motion. Um, Definitely enjoy watching this these week, like this week, more than the previous week. The previous week was like, oh, fuck, you know, we got to do this. No, nah, it's really fun. I still, not going to lie. I, I really wouldn't mind the, the fifth episode to be dropped. That would be cool. Um, but no, yeah, it was good fun. It was good fun. It's a good week. Um, and it's kind of... I don't know, because I'm at, I'm at the stage, and I'm only fucking 23, and I don't know why I'm having a fucking quarter-life crisis. <laughs> but my brain's kind of been like... You, you know when you get all nostalgic for things and then you start to believe that this, the nostalgia is really, like, just good? Well, my yeah. brain just decided that a lot of the stuff that I used to watch is better. Now, I'm I'm not I'm not being all fucking hipstery about it. It's just kind of... It, it's how... It, it's, it's just how the brain's currently happening. Like, think about wrestling. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's fucking better when I enjoyed it. It's like, well, yeah, fucking course it was. You enjoyed it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But it's cool to... Uh, it's cool to at least kind of tap that little fucking bit of nostalgia by... I mean, and first, even just kind of watching a period where... I'll I'll know a lot more about 2015, 2016. But, like, the 2014, that's a fucking great. That's a that's a dead spot, you know. I, I barely glanced at this fucking period of time. And it's a fun time uh, of the show. It's a fun time of the show, and generally I have no idea what happens except for the Who Kill Lucy... Who kills Lucy? Um, yeah, we obviously that's not that's not announced yet at this time, and um, this will be probably that'll probably be announced about February or March, I'd assume. Um, right, but right. fucking two years time. What? Uh, well, the well the storyline happens like this. I'm pretty sure the storyline starts like February, right? Oh, oh I thought they a... announced it ahead of time, and then like it was fucking broadcast you know like how george's storyline now is like was announced and then i mean you 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 wanted an answer for some for the for a question i doubt the answer to i don't fucking know i just guess it's all a day yeah but like you could be wrong (laughs) Ah, who's gonna you're just you're just making shit up mate you're just making shit up (laughs) yeah i'm sure this was announced ahead of time i don't fucking know mate it's like the time you're asking me how old Haley Slater was. It's like it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. Like, who the fuck Sorry. knows if it was announced ahead of time? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. It's just that I just briefly before we get into the storylines. There was a brilliant moment. I just want to bring it up. We will touch on them in a little bit. Where, <laughs> where Sharon goes to see is it Dennis? Like he's yes. great. Yeah. And Dennis then Ash just goes, "Oh, I bet he's gonna get royalties for a, for appearing." Elijah, fuck off. 
Oh, yeah, because no, obviously you know I don't know if we had this conversation on a podcast, but it was a, it was a, a story where Piggy's like, yeah, yeah, Daddy Walter should should get royal ease when there's a body bag on screen. Just, why? It's, yeah, well, you know, his body, his likeness, he owns it, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, 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 great, mate. Yeah, that's a yeah, every yeah, sure, yep, fine by me. That's not fucking stupid. <laughs> I too would like to get paid money for the idea of me being mentioned. Imagine every 50 quid you get if someone goes, ash, 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 ash. <laughs> um, I'm just like, what, got, got one of those like clickers. Are we that invoicing that later? <laughs> Send that through. Um... But yeah, no, there we are. I I think that's enough of the nonsense. Uh, let's talk about the EastEnders. Um, because unlike the normal podcast, I don't know. To be fair, the normal podcast been getting been getting longer and longer these days. So who the fuck knows? <laughs> Little perks are not doing Wolford on tap. Um, but yeah, uh, the main story I wanted to already mentioned. I think we'll start with. I mean, really, three of the topics are pretty kind of entangled so we're just going to start off with all of the carol and the masood stuff because they're intertwined because uh well karen and masood are together um which i barely remembered and piggy's like oh yeah yeah they are i'm like fair enough <laughs> just, yeah i wouldn't have guessed it because carol is struggling with her cancer and David has kind of swooped in to be that protector. Last week, we saw them, like, shag again, and they're together now. And it's David like, you know, I'm a new man. I'm a changed man. I'm not going to run away this time. And, well, we all know how this probably ends. We don't, but we can imagine, right? <laughs> Definitely imagine that he's just going to leave at some point, isn't he? It's what David Wicks does. Um... But, you know, Carol has cancer. David's moved in to be that kind of protector. Masood has obviously gone to see his mum's funeral. Um, but I think on the Monday episode, Masood goes to Tamwar like, ah, oh, you know, brought someone back from Pakistan. And then turns out to be Shabnan, who is obviously played by... <laughs> I don't remember her name, but she's played by the actress who is also the teacher in sex education who you know just did something more famous now <laughs> did something much more famous than eastenders um that was cool it's funny to see her like you know one of her earlier roles and it's gonna be more interesting to see how a developed character but obviously shabnam just to like how they're bringing new characters nowadays Brought in with a bit of an edge. <laughs> you know, a highly strong Muslim woman who has some views as to how she'd like things to go. She's definitely Zainab's daughter. And a lot of the kind of high horse, if I, if you can say it like that, kind of attitude kind of fucking rings out in this week. Uh, your first impressions of Shabnam? Uh, it's funny. Um, we'll get into it later on. But there's a there's a scene where me and Ash just went, "What?" And I, I I'm not gonna let Ash say it because I don't want Ash to be cancelled. But I'll say it. Uh, she basically when Masood is spoiled or broken up by uh, is broken up by Carl, she and just goes, "Didn't want you dating a white woman, anyways." And we just went, "What? Yeah. <laughs> what? A bit of a shock." <laughs> But I mean, I don't know, I thought about it and I kind of went, you know, if you're heavily religious, it makes sense to marry someone who has the same kind of values and principles. It, you it do. does. Like, it does. it's not necessarily saying white women bad. It's more so like, why why don't you just marry a Muslim woman, you know? Like, <laughs> it's, it's, like not, it's, it's, it's not like stay in your fucking lane. It's more like, you know, you're, you're a devout Muslim. <laughs> it would make sense if you got with another Muslim. Like, what would be the worst religion to mix is the problem. That's not a question I'm going to fucking answer. That's <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with you, 
What is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're not no, it. No, not even. Beliefs. Don't even think about it, mate. Just forget you even said it and move on. No, not fucking. I can't wait for the comment section. The comments can be like, <sighs> well, actually, I found these statistics, <laughs> and they clearly state atheism. Yeah, it's not, not, no, no, not even going there, mate. Um, but yeah, no, Shabnam brought back, and this is obviously. Intertwined with Carol having cancer, Carol learns that the cancer is a bit more aggressive than she realizes. David's there to kind of lead her through it. Bianca's upset because she fucking she's like, yeah, but you two are just chaos, aren't you? Like you can't have a stable relationship. Yeah, how are you gonna do it? But obviously, through a couple of episodes, they then go, all right, I've got cancer, and then Bianca has a bit of a bit of a cry. Fucking Terry just gets involved. Needlessly. Um, but, you know, um, Car Carol has her appointment and then she doesn't want to talk about it. And then Masood gets back and Masood's like, all right, I want you to, I want you to meet Shabnam. Okay, cool. Got it. Nice. Let's meet Shabnam. Two very different fucking people. <laughs> Two very, uh, very conflict heavy, like, oh, yeah, you're not mum, are you? Just fucking, you know, but you get the funny one-liners, which EastEnders are always good at writing. And Also, um, I, I should bring it up in the main podcast, but the writer for EastEnders, if you know the writer who said, my son is in the kitchen eating a biscuit. You know, like, who came up with all them lines. He's not retired. Ah. He retired last week. Ah. At the time of recording this, he retired last week. He retired last... Uh, who, who, Thursday. Who, who was it? Oh fuck! I can't think of the writer's name, but uh he was—he was—he was, he was like a—he was a known writer for East Enders. Oh yeah. He, yeah. he wrote there from like '93 to 2024, okay, and he just no, went. Well, no. I got my final duff duff. I'll see you lads later, and I'm like, leave the memories alone, because he because he has all the great one. He's probably there, fucking sat down having an argument with his wife. And like, I've got a one-liner. I've got a one-liner for the show. <laughs> It'll be funny. Quick, write that down, Beth. Write that down. That's <laughs> how I imagine yeah. he comes um, up with one-liner. You know, and the day after Masood gets back, uh, Shabnam's been arranging a memorial for the for Masood's mum and arranging for all the family to get there. And Shabnam's like, why the fuck are you coming? And Masood's clearly struggling, just like, because I want her here. And there's going to be a bit of conflict, and then uh, Carol shuts the door, and they they talk through it. And she's like, you know what? It's fine. I won't go. You guys be with your family. It's a whole fucking point of it. And they go, and you think it's about to be fine. But then I'm pretty sure the next day is where Carol... Decides to say, Ah, Masood, this ain't it, Chi. We're not in the same place, you know. I got a lot on, you got a lot on. It's just, it's not working. I'm not feeling it. And the second that he, he obviously reacts kind of accordingly, like, you know, what the fuck? Why, why the fuck? You know, this was fine before, before I left. And now it's weird realizing that something's wrong and then david essentially comes in just like ah oh, oh masood how you doing mate we've had lots of sex we've had lots of frantic disgusting sex with each other whilst you're uh -huh. mourning your dead mother i didn't want to have to tell you you forced me into it but we've been plowing like rabbits and then masood's like what the fuck and then carol's like fuck off david what oh yeah yeah uh, just you? to chime in just to chime in like they're having an argument where Dave's come back, Carl, come back, Carl, come back, Carl. Terry comes in, see? Oh, going, Carl. Oh, Terry. That's like, yeah, Jesus Christ. Fuck off, Terry. No, what, what, what <laughs> I, I didn't mean to yell, but that's, um, <laughs> that's essentially what she does. Shut up, exactly, Terry. No one yeah. cares. And yeah, fucking, <laughs> like, Dave was like, yeah, we're together and we're, we're in love. And every, it's, it's, like, it's like fucking Romeo and Juliet. Where it's like, yes, we're together, we're in love, it's fine. It's meant to be. Sorry, Masood. You're just not on the menu. I don't know why I said it like, I delivered that like Sharon. <laughs> it's fucking, um, but fucking, 
And then even Carol's like, basically, fuck off, David, you melt. What are you talking about? We're not together. Get out my shit. Motherfucker. And, and this leads to this leads to Carl going on a little wonder. And Carl goes on a little wonder. So, you know, usually when you have an argument, you go for a walk, you know, feed the ducks. You know, do some things, sing songs. But where did she walk to? Poor old Fowler herself. Sonia more fucking Fowler. Um, with Ash's childhood crush. Uh, Bex Fowler. Bit weird, because Sonia Fowler is your mother, and Bex Fowler would be your sister. So, bit weird, Chief, but I'll Look. allow it. Look, all right, it wasn't established lore at the time. No, <laughs> since then. Um... <laughs> yeah, no, uh, obviously when Bex hangs around a bit longer and isn't a fucking, like, teenager. Bex was, Bex was a big teenage crush of mine. Especially when she started to dress all, 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 all gothy. And I'm just like, yeah. Stunning. Stunning. Who's at, your trumpet? Who's your trumpet? At the time, of course. When I was the same age. <laughs> Not me looking at Teen Vex Fowler like fucking... Ooh. None of that. But as a teenager, we all have, we all have crushes. We all have, we all have crushes on characters that we watch as we grow up. Um, Harry, of course, for me. Rogue from fucking X-Men. The one with the fucking white, white strand of hair. Whew. The Stunning. original X-Men movies are they like 20... The fucking reboots in 2013. Like, uh, do you know? I mean, nah, it was mostly the one in the in the fucking animated TV show. Oh, all right. So, but in, in most of the adaptations, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not fucking... Uh, I'm not picky. Rogue is I just, rogue. I just, imagine, I just imagine you typing it in and then you probably go, yeah, Ash, there's a thing called Rule 34, don't look it up. It's just like, oh, okay, Rogue. Rule, as I told you, don't, don't. It's a teenage don't. crush. Why, why are you gonna make it weird? <laughs> you know, you, you, you gotta do things for your crush. You know. No, you fucking you, don't. You maybe want to, are you maybe want to keep get it intimate? fucking innocent and lovely, not fucking <laughs> depraved. <laughs> you fucking <laughs> like how, re how unreasonable you are. Fucking, look, there's not a topic for this, but fucking. In this in this episode, or in in this set of episodes, Lauren and Jake Stone shag, and the fucking kid sees them, and kind of realizes. And Piggy just goes, "Dad, is that cum in your bed?" She's like thirteen. You you twisted cunt. What's wrong with you? Bad word, but it felt appropriate. <laughs> fucking, what, what, what is the child and innocence? <laughs> you know, they're shagging. It's all like. You know, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm twisted. I'm fucking mental. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, she goes to see Sonia. <laughs> she goes to see Sonia Bowler. And Sonia's like, oh yeah, come on in. Come on in, Carol. And they basically have some spaghetti uh, and, and a big salad bowl. Did you see the. We, we saw it. We discussed it. reasonable amount of salad. <laughs> and it was all lettuce as well. You know, get something else in there. It's like the driest salad known to man. About a fucking a bit of three ranch. foot bowl of fucking lettuce with about two tomatoes sprinkled in there. Like, fuck me. I, not even, what's even the point, lads? What's even the point? You know, it's nice to see Sonia because Sonia, Sonia kind of goes in and out. She's not living at, at the square at this time. Um, and. You know, we get to, get to see Bex as well. Bex sings sings a song. Sings a lovely bill, a, a, a bit of hallelujah. You know, it's it, well well played. It well well played as a tune. You know, hallelujah. Classic. Although not not really if you're fucking feeling like you're gonna die. <laughs> feeling like you're gonna get fucking destroyed by cancer. Probably not. Yeah, oh, Bex, the read, song? read the fucking room, Bex. What's the song I'm thinking of? Just, I, I don't know who, what band it's by, but I'm just imagining Hail to the King playing on my acoustic guitar. Hail to the King! 
He <laughs> just that belting out on <laughs> the acoustic guitar. I saw no other words to it. All in us, hail to the king. <laughs> That's that belting out. Or, uh, I'm on a highway to hell. Come on, Carl, you know this. I'm on a highway to hell. Come on, Carl, join me. Oh, Carl, why are you crying? I'm Happy think, time. I think the perfect song for this was Hallelujah. You've, 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 you've not offered any, any better options, mate. Wonderwall, there you go. No. Boring as fuck. How'd you play play Wonderwall? I'm dying, I'm dying, Bex. Fuck you. Oh, thanks. Thanks. But yeah, it was, uh, obviously Sonia is told about uh, Carol's cancer. And it's like, you know, I'll, I'll be out, mum's fine, blah, blah, blah. Nice to see you, all that. Stays around for a couple of days. Uh, she's, she walked out, essentially. David's worried, Bianca's worried, Terry's on the prowl, trying to find her. And it's fucking... Yeah, it's just kind of funny. It's, it's weird. I swear, there was another bit, but you distracted me by saying shit songs that Bex didn't sing. Uh, There's another bit where uh, obviously uh, Bianca comes in to see Sonia um, because she's worried about her mom, or their mom, I guess. Yeah. And uh, basically, they set up a lovely bed for Carol, you know, and then Sonia and Carol have a heart to heart, the good old motherly daughter, I believe she's a daughter, yeah. Carol, um, conversation, and and she basically walks home and goes, Well, David, see you putting up the bins. How about a good old shag? And they go in. Yeah, they kind of, they go back towards being a couple again. Um, oh, that's, that's where I was going to fucking go with it. Mate, fucking, fucking, this is a side, this is a tangent anyways, but I, 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 I was the Carol in this situation. Instead of, like, someone singing, I was just, I was browsing Reddit. You know? I was on Reddit, seeing what's happening. And there's this fucking... And there's, there's this fucking, like, like dog subreddit. And fucking... It's always the pet videos that, that, that you catch and you just, just fucking... Just tears. Just pissing down your face. So I was fucking... I watched a bit on this video and it essentially... It was saying, like, you know... It's like, oh, you die and go to heaven, but this is the first thing you see. Then it's like a dog just running up to you and you're just like, oh, fuck, man. Ah, ah, just fucking just pissing out to his. Just, I was sobbing for like 20 minutes or like half an hour at this fucking video. So, so I, I just thought so, I'd immortalize so, it. Yeah, yeah, that's better enough. But like, um, what, what, so when you eventually hit the parley gates, if they exist, what would you like to see? What would be the first thing you'd like to see? Anything <laughs> in the world. Jesus goes, this is the first thing you can see, my son. You can't ask me any questions. You can't ask me anything. What the meaning of life is, you can only see this thing you really want to see. What are you going with? I feel like I should go for a funny answer, but I'm just going for a, I'm just going for a sentimental one. Just be, it would just be see my dad and Joey, probably, and any actual departed family members that I missed. Uh, I, I, I want to go find the person who invented homework. Sorry? I want to go find the first new invented homework. <laughs> Homer. Homework. Home. Oh. Homework. What? Well, you're right. Go with a baseball bat. Go. Jesus, I want to talk to him. Jesus, Jesus, get off my back. I just want to talk to him. Where? Where is he located in heaven? Where is he located? What are you doing? What am I doing with this bat, Jesus? Don't you worry. Yeah. Don't you fucking worry, sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> But but like but if I could meet any celebrity by the time I get up there, it would be William Regal, just so I could recite the Triple H promo on him. It was me, sunshine. Yeah, there <laughs> there there are two kinds of people. There's me, there's me. Like yeah, I just like see my dad and my dog. <laughs> but like, who the fuck made up homework, you dodgy bastard? Smash! What? Yeah, <laughs> no, that was uh. It's a fun little but, but time, I... but yeah, the fucking pet video is absolutely, absolutely wreck me now. You know, but especially like, on some of the uh... more fragile days. Show me like a nice video. I'll just, oh, fucking hell, I can't be handling this. There was a video the I other can show fucking you a dog day. If you, want. you what? I can show you a dog if you want. No, no, I'm good, mate. I'm good. 
I, I don't need uh, to see the dog. dogs. There's a dog I like called Dog the Sheep Poodle. Yeah, and but he's you just... like all the dogs who are just fat, lazy dogs. No, he's not fat. He's just he has human eyes. That's the problem. Like because but... he just stares into your soul. But you leave me and my fat dogs alone. I know mm. they're not healthy, but but you're I like fat like, dogs. Like, I like dogs that look. You just like look weird. dogs that that seem like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I get along well with bulldogs. <laughs> Um, I mean, have you seen Pablo the Bulldog? Oh, no, a fucking bat wanker. But fucking, it's just, it's funny because obviously uh, for the for the context, I lost my dog in what November oh, or some November. shit. Um, I think it was like first or second week of November. It's fucking absolutely miserable. But um, you know, it's it's one of those things where it's a companion you you can't replace them, and uh. It's uh, especially if they've been with you for a long time. But yeah, I have become I've become an adult now. I I cry at pet videos. It's it's usually even the happy ones as well. Like the other week, I don't know why I've derailed the podcast with this, but I think it's funny in its own little way. So that's just fine. There was this fucking video where the whole premise is like it's it's like a weightlifter in this competition, you know. For his his wife who died with cancer, he said, "You know what? Like before, I uh, you know I'll I'll basically she died and she's like, promise me you you'll win that fucking gold or some shit." And you know, so that that's the setup. And it's like, okay, cool. So you see, the first attempt, he fucks it up. You know, gets angry with himself. And then obviously the second attempt, he fucking does it and nails it, and you can just see him fucking break down. So he's realized he's done it. And they like animated like 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 an idea of his wife like helping him lift it. It's like a ghost, just ah oh, fucking t- just tears just out my fucking eyes. It's unreasonable, uh, but I I won't I won't take it away. You know, it is, it is nice having proper emotions. <laughs> yeah, because like uh, I know this doesn't matter because we're in twenty fourteen, but I'll just briefly touch upon it because I'll be bringing it up on the podcast. But like. Watching the Iron Claw, they're like, it's all about toxic masculinity because like the father's like your brother died, don't cry at the funeral because you know, Von Erichs don't you cry, look, look, basically yeah, men don't basically. cry, and it's fucking depressing. The Iron Claw is about the Von Erichs, by the way, a tragic wrestling family. I do not recommend looking into that family because you you go into a happy, you'll come out like what have I just you'll, wandered you'll have into? a fucking crisis at the end of it. <laughs> you, you'll have a cry. You'll have a cry, then break down, then have another cry, and then continue to break down. But yeah, it's like, that That was, a, like, and there's a scene in it, and it, they, they couldn't get one of the fun airs because it would have been too much tragedy for the film, obviously being Chris. So they have Kerry, obviously, where he shoots himself um, outside the ranch, outside the farm, basically, using his da- the gun he gave his dad. And but me and my dad was sitting here like, all right, it's going to end now. And then you see a boat, like you see Kerry in the lake and a boat starts driving up. And then you see Michael and David and you see little are Jacob. They, are they all, all of the all the kids who died? Yeah, they're all the kids who died. And I'm like, oh, oh, fuck, fuck. <laughs> just pissing, crying. Because it's like, wait, where's my little older brother? And it, and then they just have to shot the kids. It's like, yeah, oh, Kerry. Man. And I'm like, oh. Yeah, that fucking that would be fucking lethal. That it's oh, like it's been... it's not even like during like normal day to day stuff. It's always like I'm watching a video or something, or I'm like watching a TV show, and like something will happen there, and I'll be sad, and I'll just fucking cry my eyes out. Because um, the problem is there. There's a difference between crying and doing the Haley Slater cry. Just literally everything. Did you mm-hmm. did you clean the bins, Ash? <laughs> Ash, who's shit in the toilet? Uh, what's <laughs> be? <laughs> but yeah, it's fuck it's fucking wild, man. I mean, as someone uh, just fuck it. I mean, we fully derailed this anyways, who the fuck cares? Well we'll talk about the East Enders soon. But like as someone who uh j- before I before I was on medication, my fucking emotions were barely there. I was just like stone faced, don't give a fuck. Um that anything really. Unless it was particularly bad. Um, obviously on medication now that kind of brought back, I don't know, it's fucking some balance in my brain, fixed it basically. I can now sleep and I now am emotional, which has made for more fucking issues because, you know, now I've fucking, 
I've missed out on so many years of like conflict fucking management, you know? Because if any if anything like dodgy happened, I'd be like I'd just just not fucking care. Oh well. Who the fuck cares? Was that an insult? I don't fucking know. I can't tell. Um but yeah, it's uh I I I wouldn't take it away cuz I <laughs> I don't want to see me function like this. Like yeah, sure. I I got a bit more fat, but I can sleep better and I feel emotions now, so... <laughs> yeah, the, 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 A pretty the, the, healthy trade-off, in my opinion. Tablets do help. Um, I, I recommend if you are in a dark place, I recommend do go see a doctor and see if you can get a few tablets. And if, if you can't be trusted with tablets, for obvious reasons, then obviously get someone who cares for you to help you with the tablets. Yeah, the I last mean... thing you want to so is overdose on tablets because you just start throwing up. Yeah, uh, ne ne no, I was gonna say never happened to me, but that's the joke to say it has, it hasn't, no. Um, but, uh, where am I going with this? Where's the angle? Um, do, 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 do. what's my point here? Yeah, like anti anxiety or just general like antidepressants, pretty fucking good. In my humble opinion, help me out, help my sister out dramatically. Who had one of the worst years of her fucking life last year, um, and now she's kind of managed to actually start to enjoy herself, and it's been really fucking nice. But nothing was sadder to kind of slowly see, just like because last year was a fucking rough year for all of us, because we had about seven different like life events happen, where just all the changes, all the changes in one year. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty fucking rough to be like, oh, you know, she's doing well again. She's she's back up. She's doing okay. <laughs> Nan died. Ah, oh, fucking hell. That's... <laughs> Joey died. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ, you know. Fucking... The other dog died as well. Ah, she didn't, she didn't know that dog. It's fine. Um, oh, but yeah. I, lo I love that, actually. <laughs> I love that. Didn't, didn't care about that dog. dog. Um... But yeah, so it was, uh, and medication helped her pretty much fucking sort her life out. Obviously, I was, I don't know why this turned to a big fucking advertisement for, for medication, but, um, you know, it's a, it's a lot easier to do things when you don't feel half the anxiety that you usually would. Um, and, you know, it's an extra boost and help if you need it, so I'll uh, give credit to them. Definitely helped change my life. Um, anything else on this, or do we just go back to talk about these senders? Uh, uh, just a quick, quick note. Uh, was watching two dogs make pancakes. It was nice. Ollie and Tato. Um, do you want to know why the dog's called Tato? Uh, I'm sure, they feed it about seven packets a week. No, 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 no. They got their dog Ollie to name the dog. So like they put a bunch of names in a hat and they went, Ollie, choose a name. And he also he got his teeth and picked up a piece of paper. It just meant basically like that. And uh, it was like, Tato. And then they went, do you want to choose another name? And he went, like that, Tato. Are you sure you really want a name of Tato? And they named him Tato. But obviously on his birth cert, he can't have Tato. So his name's William. <laughs> so his name's William. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? We were talking about Williams the other day, and there's a fucking dog named Williams. <laughs> I like pets, but I don't like I don't like pet I don't like dog people. <laughs> Fuck them, <laughs> fucking weird. Oh yeah, but but like um, just I was just enjoying that, just watching Ollie and and uh, Tato make pancakes. It was beautiful. Yeah, they I... obviously um just just before we go back to it. They obviously, um, excuse me. They obviously want you to believe that the dog is talking. So they get these, uh, they get these like robot voices for the dogs. So it's like, hello, my name's Ollie. I'm a dog. I'm a good boy. I'm a very good boy. And these are the things my parents do for me. Nah, look, I like dogs. Dogs are cool. They're great companions. Don't. Don't don't like don't like the humans who are a bit too OTT with it. Like they're dogs, they're not your fucking baby. 
Like, yeah, sure, be this big, big emotional connection. Yeah, sure, but, like, don't start making them talk, you know. Don't. I, but, you know, that's just me, all right? You can do it if you want. If it makes you happy, do it. But you, you, you're never going to catch me talking to a dog like, Oh, yes, does mummy say I want to go for a walk? Yes, mummy. It's like, ah, oh, fucking get me out, you know. <laughs> It it it, it 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 um. I d- I don't know how to feel about it because I'm like you don't know what the dog's thinking. Like the dog's like, hello, I'm a good boy. Then the dog could be going, man, I really want to shag that couch. Like, you don't know what the dog's thinking, man. I really love to take a shit on the floor. Like, uh, you, you know, you, the, a dog's mentally, you don't know what they think. Yeah, <laughs> you can't I... put words in their mouth. Yeah, I I, me... I don't like it. I say that I, I I have a nan who fucking does that, and oh yeah, also also Ollie and Taylor have a nan. She's called Nanny Biscuits, and they give her pit. Uh, Nanny Biscuits gives her gives them biscuits, and she has a little dog called Honey, and Honey's the grumpiest dog I've ever seen. So yeah, there's more lore for you. Yeah, I'm discarding whatever what whatever space that's taken in my brain. Just, just never thinking about that again. Fucking yeah. yeah, just they also make the dog paint as well. The dog's paint. Fuck you now. <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm just a bit grumpy, really. Is what I'm slowly realizing. <laughs> I'm, I, I like I like my routines, and I like. I like my routines, but I can't always guarantee that I'll be having a good time at the time of the routine. But if I don't have the routine, my brain has a little bit of a breakdown. So, fucking, yeah, having a great time, mate. <laughs> no, it's, uh, twitter yeah, fucking hell, man. Uh, yeah, no, just, uh, don't, don't, don't give your dogs a voice, please. Don't make them speak. Don't fucking give them subtitles on your videos. Fucking, you don't know what they're thinking. Fuck you, furious. Unless you're unless you're talking to sheep poodle, which which then you have no thoughts in your head. You're just. I uh, uh, see. So can I find? I have a gif. Hold on, just so you know for context what this dog is. Uh, yeah, but I don't, um, I don't need to know, mate. No, no, no. But this dog, this dog. This dog is not a dog. Look at look at this. You will see what I mean by this dog's not a dog. You will see. Hold on. I I hope whatever reaction I have is more interesting than what I'm expecting. <laughs> it better be a fucking good one. Otherwise, you're just you're you're just gonna continue with the grump. Tell me about fucking dog owners who. Like, like, don't, don't dress up your dog either. Don't like, don't like people putting clothes on the dogs. If it's like to go out and like, and, and, and like a coat, I get, I get it. But you know, not like, oh, you know, I gave him little shoes. Yeah, it is a dog who has eyes as fucking like, like piss holes in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> look at him! Look at him! He has no eyes. Yeah, he's completely thoughtless. He has no thoughts. I love it. I love. I love the. I love. I love the one where he's just staring into the fucking void. <laughs> well, yeah, there, there, there's Doug. Well, I am. Uh, yeah, there we are. That's that's it done. That's that's all. That's the dog arc. Dogs are cool. Don't be a fucking OTT dog owner though. But you're allowed to be cuz who the fuck am I to judge you? I'm 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 not I'm not the dog police. Uh sir, you're you have put your dog in a onesie. I think that's fucking stupid. I'm going to take your dog away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm not the dog police. Regardless, let's get back to the East Enders. Um phew. Carol breaks up with Masood. Masood begins a downward spiral because, well, you know, everything he's had is kind of fallen to pieces. And it has, they have, they have a big argument because Shabnam's devout Muslim principled morals. 
And Fat Boy's living at their house as well, and Fat Boy has beer. Shabnam's not pleased at there being beer in the house, because, I don't know, I assume it's some, like, temptation thing, or, like, some choice. I'm sure. I, I, I would imagine it's a high idea that good that good Muslims don't drink or some shit, but I don't know. Yeah, except so believe drinking gonna... is prohibited. Yeah. In their, uh, religion. In their, like, religion. Yeah. Even um, though, I, I don't know if they go by the religion that Jesus, uh, Jesus' blood is wine. Enough of that. If it is... Then, yeah, then you're, you're just trying to you're just trying to mix relig like what what are the two worst religions to mix together? You're just trying to get out <laughs> of again, aren't you? Not happening. Not no, on my no, watch. No, I, 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 not no, on no, no. Not on my I'm watch. Just across... <laughs> I'm just going across like that. Jesus' blood is apparently wine. So like, if Muslims have a different Bible, I just want to know. Leave me down. Let me know down in the comments. They do have a different Bible. Do they? It's called the. Quran. I thought all religions were the same. No, 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 mate. Did not, no, no, did did you never have to do like religion in school? I got exempt from religion. What? Yeah, I got exempt in secondary school from religion. How? Why? I just told him I was an atheist, and I went, fair enough. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's you know, it's still it's still good to learn about religion. I mean, yeah, was, yeah. So was... I just sat in the back. Of... It was I, like kind I of within the like. Classroom. I mean, I was taught. It was kind of like PSHE. It was kind of like the like religion, ethics, philosophy, that type of deal. So you get tackled interest a bit. Yeah, the fucking the uh, Muslim holy book is the Quran, um, which obviously has different principles than other religions, right? You know, like 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 a, a Sikh holy but a Sikh holy text is different to a Muslim holy text. You know. A Christian Bible is different from the Quran. <laughs> like, it's di different attitudes and ethics and morals and principles, right? I'm sure you can find a lot of links of generally, like, the ideas of becoming a better person and trying to, like, raising family. A lot of, a lot of those same, similar, like, principles are probably shared. But, uh, yeah, definitely different, <laughs> different religions uh, sometimes give different lifestyles. For the most part, I know that much. Thanks. Yeah, just well, you know. Just, but every religion look, is a good you religion. You got outlawed to fucking re. You know, I feel like I've got to step up. You know, I've got to. But 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 just so people don't get offended in the comment section, <laughs> all religions are good. There's no bad religion. What about what Unless about, what about, it, what about extremist religions? Uh, I can't comment on that. Ash. I can't comment. <laughs> What about Our the Westboro God... Baptist Church? Oh, 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 oh I, my, my, one of my favorite videos as a child, just to get off topic, was a trans girl, uh, no, trans trans man, like, um, handing, like, got a bunch of LGBTQ march. And just meant the Westboro Baptist Church is taking, like, in donations. So they just send a bunch of pride shit in. And I believe they start prank calling them as well. And I just I couldn't stop laughing. Yeah, but, the uh, thing I also had a crush on them. It's Miles, Miles McKenzie. Yeah, all right. It's all. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough, mate. Fair enough. I uh, yeah, gently, gently didn't didn't go over the line, so that's fine by me. <laughs> We're all good. Um, but but yeah, that's why fundamentally we try not to wade into shit we know nothing about. You didn't even fucking know that there were different holy books for different religions, for fuck's sake. <laughs> maybe I did, maybe I didn't. I'm not gonna let you know. <laughs> well, you fuck, you fuck. What, 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 you can't play coy now. Fucking know the answer to that <laughs> fucking question. It's my podcast, I'll do I, what I want. I'll, okay, I, we'll do I, it live. I can neither confirm or deny that I didn't know this thing. I fucking told you what it was. Well... <laughs> We've all had a drink. It's, uh, <laughs> Never happened to me, of course. Never oh, happened. Fucking hell, man. All right, let's carry on, though, as there's a conflict, as there's beer in the house, it's Fat Boys, and Masood is on downward spiral, just like, look, if Fat Boy wants to drink the beer, he'll drink the beer. 
uh, he compares Shabnam to, uh, like Zainab and kind of, you know, like, oh, you're on your high horse, you know, with all your Muslim virtues. And obviously, he's just kind of trying to, he's just lashing out in general at everyone for anything. And he even decides to drink. And yeah, it's it's not something that Tamwa or Chabnam are fucking willing to see. You know, they're like, fuck this, we're staying with our auntie Fatima. You know, we're gonna f fuck you, all right? Sort your shit out, we'll be back later. And this ends up with him and with Masood and Fatboy having a drink, which we don't see. But where it goes is the day after, Masood offers to host a poker night at his with the lads. So you have you have Mick, you have Terry, you have Ian, you have Alfie, you have who else do you fucking have? I missed two of that's them. That's it. I believe. That's it. Um, there might be one more, but I believe that's maybe. literally it. Um, and you know this kind of Masood still lashing out like, oh, what a devout Muslim can't can't gamble, huh? It's like, ah, oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> I get it. You 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 want to lash out, but man alive, you're fucking having a having a proper Barney. <laughs> um. And they gamble, and it, it's like a lad's night. They all learn some secret. Well, you know, him and Carol split up, etc., etc. Ian shits on David Wicks, because, you know, David Wicks... Oh, David's up. there, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. David's not there. No, he's not. But, you know, David, you know, David cheat with Cindy. Like, fucking... He's obviously got his gripes. And it results in a big load of gambling. And... Masood wages more than he can fucking afford to lose. Alfie puts in 500 quid and Masood puts in his... Masood puts in Tamwa's entire university fund. And it's like, ah, oh, no. But, you know, he has got a really good hand. He's got two queens. I don't know poker, so I don't fucking know if it is actually a good hand. But he's got two queens. And it's like, okay... This is like a 80% good bet, you know? He should win this, should be fine. Uh, does Al Alfie has two kings, I think? I believe or he has two, two tens. tens. Or two tens, rather. Um, And I, like I said, don't really know the significance, but it's basically one of the things that Alfie could have done to have won, <laughs> you know? Like, Masuda good cards, Alfie had better. And now Tamwa's entire uni fund, which looked like a good grand or two in there, just gone. And Alfie's darted off to Australia to be with Spencer, who's setting up a bar with, you know, him down there. Maybe Vicky, I would assume. Pretty sure she was mentioned. Uh... <laughs> so, yeah, and, you know, Fat Boy being the moral compass, which you know you fucked up in that situation, just kind of like... Dude, you can't fucking do this. Why the fuck have you done this? That's He's been saving for ages for his uni fund. You've just fucking gambled it all away. That's fucking ridiculous. Um, Like, I kind of got some flashbacks to... In classic EastEnders where... Uh, Ali kind of bets... He bets the calf for someone's, like, car and a lot of money. And Ali does manage to win, but the the uh, Hassan dies. The the baby, the baby. Like, oh yeah, we finally made it. We got money again. Yeah, this is great. Your baby died. Ah, oh. <laughs> classic yeah, Eastenders. Shit. The first, the first tragedy of the square, honestly. Because it's like, oh yes, you know, life's looking up. It's really good. Hassan's dead. Fucking hell, all right. And then Sue turns despondent. A video idea that I'd had a while ago that I've never done, but would be interesting like to Mark do. Like the Mark Fowler video. Yeah, like the Mark Fowler. There's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of unmade videos. Um, Sorry to throw you under the bus. No, that's fine. Well, yeah. But regardless, it kind of echoes the kind of like... The the big the big issue with this is obviously Masood's on a downward spiral and Shabnam's gonna fucking give him hell. Tamwa's gonna probably not give him hell, he's gonna passively give him hell, but 
in his own way because he's not the most confrontational. And it kind of just shows Masood kind of everything he has is gone, pretty much. And it's not really the place that he wants to be in. Uh, did anything else happen with Masood? Or is he... Oh, oh, wait, no. And the worst part is, he fucking cut out a bunch of paper to make it look like there's still the money in there, but there's like 20 quid. <laughs> he put like 20 quid back in there. <laughs> it's just like, Masood, you fucking idiot, man. And Fat Boy uh, is pretty fucking annoyed anyways. Yeah, and he threatens to kick Fat Boy out, but I think Fat Boy doesn't he move into Dots at some time? Or he Who has. I mean, we've we, we barely seen Dot so far. She's been chilling. Yeah, Dot's on a break. Um, but yeah, I suppose, and it also parallels the, the girls' night, which is also interesting, where Everybody kind of opens up, you know, cat, people learn that Cat's pregnant, fucking Cora gets to do the line like, oh, you know, I smoked and drank all through my pregnancy. And that that did fine. And then Shirley goes, yeah, but one of had cancer and one's a junkie. And then Cora just kind of just looks mortified, just like, oh, fucking hell. Who had hell cancer? The Who's the one who... Uh, Tanya. Um, and <laughs> it was fucking, it's a great, it was a great line. Shirley kind of decides, you know what, fuck it. You know, Linda, you're all right. <laughs> you're okay. I don't like you mostly, but you're okay. Obviously, Linda's upset because, you know, bas with, with the son, like, um, in the army, fucking... Any time you hear that there are deaths in Af in Afghanistan, in this instance, she, you know she fucked her like uh, she, she lose her fucking mind because you know it could yeah. be Lee, it could be Lee, and a pretty fucking scary time, pretty stressful. Uh, what else happened at the ladies' night? I uh, just briefly before it is tragic to uh, like lose someone in a war, um, because I know people say fight for your country, but. You shouldn't fight for a war that's going to be like a game of chess. This is just my opinion. People will be patriotic. I don't care. If you want to fight for your country, go ahead. But don't tell fucking Timmy, who's 12, who, who doesn't know where to pick his nose or have a shite, going, you should join the army when you turn 18. No, don't do Just if you want to join the army, join the army. But if you don't, don't force people to join the army because, you know, it's not cool. I... And... I don't know, I, it's kind of, you shouldn't fight for a country that doesn't believe in you, and that's, you know. There's, there's uh, been a, there's actually, been a lot you better of, not speak up, your country's going to war. There's been a lot of meaningless death, and there's been a lot of meaningless lives just lost, but, you know, what, like, even even the war in, like, Iraq with, with uh, under the fucking Tony Blair, where it's like, oh! That is actually a war criminal because it was a fucking unjustified, like, you know, just kind of, you know. <laughs> I don't think lives should be as fucking discarded as they are. And how. Unless you are literally fighting for freedom, which then I understand. Yeah. But if you're going for, like, uh, basically, I'm not going to compare America here. I'll just do Ireland instead. But it's like if the North <laughs> fought with the Republic. Like, <laughs> why would you want a civil war? Oh, that's it... perfect, mate. I, <laughs> I could, I, I could insult America, but I'll go for something that nobody cares about. Ireland, fuck them. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all, all oh, three, of, all, all three of the Irish crowd, like fucking. <laughs> used to like Piggy, and then he talked about the war. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Because like, the last time America went to war with itself, they didn't win. <laughs> it's like me playing Mario Kart with you. I'm not going to win. I'm going to get fucking bodied. Yeah. And there might be another American Civil War because Texas at the moment, uh, they they want to set up more barbed wire or something at the border. And the government was like, no, you can't do that. And Texas went, well, I'm fucking Texas. I can do what I want, mate. I'm fucking Texas. <laughs> and then a bunch of people went, yeah, Texas. Whoa, Texas, Texas. Um, and yeah, that whole thing happened. Carrying on with this. Yeah. The ladies' night was fun. It's always, whenever there's a ladies' night sort of thing, you always know it's good. 
because EastEnders knows how to write the fucking zingers of characters who never really get to talk. You know, Carol's. I think. I think that. I think they mentioned like Carol and David being back together. Paul Masood. You know, like, uh, uh, do they mention the cancer? Uh, no. At I least Bianca so. wants her to, because Bianca gets fucking trolley. Um. But yeah, the scenes are fun. If there are any scenes to seek out this week, watch the watch the watch the the guys in the ladies' night. It's good fun. Like all the men are like smoking cigars, drinking beer, and fucking probably whiskey. Just fucking, <laughs> and the girls are was, just drinking I wish, champagne. I wish it was a uh, strip poker. I wouldn't love to see in his little tidy whities Fucking, the how I shot my right mate. <laughs> um, but there are two other things, and these are slightly lesser aspects, so we will probably just rattle through them. But they're still interesting enough to talk about. Sharon gets annoyed at Phil because she finds Ronnie's phone and he's like, you don't want to know. And she's like, yeah, but I do want to know. And then he says, he says, like, look, if you want the whole truth, uh, there's a lot of stuff you probably aren't going to want to know. And then she's like, yeah, but I want to know. And then he explains that basically Cole's dead because of Ronnie. And she's like, whoa, what the fuck, you know? But... And she immediately is kind of like, oh, God, why did I want to know? <laughs> I want to know. I, 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 I don't want to Ash, know. Ash, you've got the most important thing. I mean, I was getting to it. No, 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 you've got the most important thing. What about my child, Denny? <laughs> why am I raising him in this house? Poor Denny. Ah, oh, fuck off with Denny. I'm glad he's <laughs> dead. Yeah. Um, And we oh, obviously... Denny. We learn that fucking Dennis is dead because of Phil. And whilst fucking doing this, I was genuinely like, oh shit! And then Piggy's like, oh, you're right, mate. And I'm like, I'm reacting to the EastEnders just with a biscuit in my mouth. Uh, oh, 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 can I what just What section was it? Him? Yeah, what, 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 what bit was it where I had a tragic moment strike me? Yeah, yeah, right. I'm going to give context to this. So obviously me and Ash were watching it together. I was looking at Ash just dipping his biscuit in his tea. And obviously Sonia's like talking to uh Carol, he's talking yeah. to Carol and Carol's like, Oh Sonia, you know, I've got cancer and Ash goes, Oh a tragedy happened and I went, Yeah, I know it's a tragedy, Sonia, you know, telling your daughter you have cancer. No, I dropped the I dropped a biscuit in my tea. It's fucking hmm. gone horrible now and I'm like this, this, She's telling a literal tr her daughter she's cancer. Yeah, but <laughs> the point is, my fucking heart dropped the second that biscuit fell in my tea. <laughs> Like, I genuinely, yeah. like, like, oh, <laughs> like someone just told me tragic news. That biscuit fell in the tea and my heart just sank. Like, nah, nah, it just scoop it out in the end, or... I drank it. I didn't like it because it was all bitty at the end, but I did drink it. But yeah, fucking hell, <laughs> uh, my heart sank and it was really funny to me. Like, why is that what what got to me? Just like, just like the dog videos, my tea, like my biscuit dropping in my tea, just oh man. <laughs> uh, but um, regardless, that was oh, just a um, funny little um, tidbit. And also, I uh, I forgot to mention, Carl recommend Carl 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 recommend uh, recommends herbal tea to Sonia. Herbal and, tea's okay. Yeah, that's it. Herbal have you had herbal tea? Yeah, I've had, I've had a decent chunk of herbal tea. Um, it's what I used to drink when I was at work because um, I didn't like how my mum made tea. Um, so I just have the herbal ones. And honestly, mate, the worst bit is is it smells so fucking good. You smell it, you're like, oh, fucking it. Yeah, what's, yeah, that's... Like, we had this, we had, we had this peach tea that got subbed for something. So I had this peach tea, and like me and my brother were just like, oh man, that fucking smells like it's really tasty. And then you just taste it, and it's just like fucking, it's just nothing. It tastes like fucking nothing. It's like, oh, this my, is tasty. My... Oh, wow. Really strong peach. I hope, it's, I hope it tastes this strong. Oh, oh, that's just, just water, isn't it? <laughs> it's just roofy water. But my experience with herbal tea is not good. But there is a funny story. Um, my dad and my uncle, uh, my uncle Gigi Dolan, 
um, basically went up to fix me auntie's house or something. Mm. And they went, oh, you makes a cup of tea there. To my dad, obviously. And my dad said, oh, I will, I will, uncle. I will, uh, brother. And uh, so he makes the tea. He brings it in. So they're sitting there watching the racing. And I and think, oh, this tea, uh, it's a bit uh, off. What'd you put into it? Oh, fuck, I put horrible tea in it. He put horrible, he made tea, well, he made it with a horrible tea bag. <laughs> and he put like the milk in and everything. Oh, no. And yeah, he, like, he, he, fucking... he, like, he made it like an yeah. actual tea. And he was just, oh. I wasn't there, but he told me that story. Yeah, nah, fuck that. Sounds disgusting, that. Like, herbal tea's oh. okay. Earl Grey's shit. Like, honey and chamomile, kind of nice, you know. Like, I don't mind them. But I'd also just rather have a fucking cup of tea. <laughs> like, you know, green tea's okay. It's all, like, it's not, for, you don't have it for the same reason, of course. But, yeah, like, you know, I'd probably just drink a normal tea. If I was, like, if I was, like, trying to, like, save money, maybe I'd buy some, like, herbal tea or some shit, but, you know. I just buy a big bag of tea bags. Yeah, that last yeah. like for a few months. Yeah, like, uh, like we all do that. We all buy. I we buy Thompsons, I believe. I don't even know what that is. I buy Yorkshire. Yorkshire hey, tea's the best hey, tea. Up, um, but then I don't know. I even now I drink much less tea simply because I I stopped having like sweeteners with it. But because it because I've not had it with sweeteners for like two months now, like I tr I had one with some sweetener, it just tastes wrong. It just tastes fucking weird. So yeah, less tea. Still good though. Regardless. Um Phil tells Sharon oh. that he was the reason Dennis died. And Sharon is fucking mortified because, you know, I'd kind of argue that Dennis is Sharon's true love of her life. Like, I feel like Phil and Sharon are, like, trauma-bonded, I guess. Like, they both lived a shit childhood and they found each other. But it's not... It's never the healthiest relationship. And it never has been. Because they're just too dysfunctional. Like, they don't work together. Like, well. And... Yeah, Sharon does proceed to be like, Yeah, but Ma Denny, he could die! He could die if in your house, you fucker! What's wrong with you? And then... She she gets back and at some point Denny like Phil's cutting Denny's hair and he slips and cuts his ear and there's blood everywhere and Sharon's like what are you doing to him and it's like ah oh, like if there's one thing I don't miss is I don't miss Sharon being like Sharon being overprotective as fuck to Denny because I accept I accept that Sharon never expected to be able to have kids. Because I think it was a story back in the day that she had an abortion, but, like, didn't take the medication afterwards, which meant that she was no longer able to conceive. Obviously, since that period of time, she's had two kids. Um, <laughs> uh, just forget about it, you know. <laughs> forget about it, it's fine. Um, but, fucking... I'm not... I, I'm glad we don't have to see fucking... Her just be like, yeah, but my Denny, he's perfect. He's a, he's a, he's an angel, and he's like, he's a prick. He's always been a prick. This Denny seems chill, but you know the the later one, fucking bell end. And then he grew up, or did he? But no, he, he didn't. He had a kid somehow. I, like I mean, I think I think we know 15. how, but <laughs> it's he had a kid. He could have adopted. He could have adopted. No, nope, that was his child. But yeah, it's a it's an interesting dynamic. Sharon kind of gets over it though, realizes, you know what, at least he's telling me. Um and this leads us to the final topic, that being someone in the Jackson household is pregnant. And who? Honestly, <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> I really don't know who it could be. Harry. Cool. What if it's, what if it's Cindy Juniors? Because be. they've mentioned that, that Liam and Cindy have been getting on. 
And I yeah, I think it's Cindy Juniors. We haven't seen her. <laughs> we haven't seen her at all. But uh, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, then again, fucking, I'm pretty sure it's not even Liam's kid anyways, but. Could be Cindy. Would be interesting. I don't remember any other babies in this time period of EastEnders. But Martin yeah. Junior. Um. There we are. So it's it basically it kind of it causes a bit of a fucking stink because it's like Carol, you're pregnant, and then she just kind of jokes about it like, ah, come on, grow up. <laughs> I'm too old for this. Bianca, Bianca, you're pregnant. No. Whitney, ah, oh, Lauren, and then Max is like, I'll kill him. I'll fucking kill him. <laughs> uh fuck, man. It's too good. Um, but the real answer, as Piggy joked, is it's Terry's. <laughs> it's Terry. Terry's pregnant, and Bianca's yeah. the father. <laughs> um, <laughs> Terry, Terry. Ah. Uh, Imagine if they tried. Oh, imagine if Ricky. Imagine if Bianca, for each like person she got with, she had to shriek their name, just to see if it fits. Yeah. It's 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 Bianca's version of like Cinderella and the glass slipper, like uh, Rick A. <laughs> Rick A. Rick. Terry. Oh, that does sound good. <laughs> Johnny. 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 Nah, it doesn't, no, doesn't no. fit. Doesn't fit. D Danny. Danny. No, no, I think it's Rick A. Rick A. Um, like, if it, if like, we've mentioned it before, but it, imagine she uses a horror fucking catchphrase on these standards at her DJ shows. Like, <laughs> you have to admit, just, this one's called the Terry Drop. Dun, 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 dun. Terry. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> like, just after he's done his character, she has the Ricky Drop, the fucking Terry Drop. Yeah. But, all right, I think that, that aside, there was going to be a bit more of a dynamic, but I do genuinely think I've just figured out who's who's pregnant. So, <laughs> like, I uh, I think I have. So I I'm quite content to to stake my claim to that one. Makes sense theoretically. But there we are. Um, that is the bulk of the Who Killed Lucy Beal podcast. That's the bulk of Who Done It Over. Um, I suppose we missed it last week, but we'll do it this week. Uh, let's just, we don't need, we don't need the Steve Blackman award for this. Oh. We don't fucking, you don't even, you don't even put any effort into it in the normal podcast. It's not extending to this podcast. <laughs> um, so we'll just stop for underrated and who needs slapping down. Underrated, I think I will give it to, I'm going to give it to Cora because she doesn't get to do much, but she hits people with one-liners, and I love her wholeheartedly. Or I'd even possibly say Fat Boy, just to make the no, because he was he's reasonable though, isn't he? Like a bit of a bit of humor. He plays he played that that awkward dinner scene. Like, yeah, yeah, no, no, I don't really want any beer actually. Fat Boy, you want this beer? Yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> just fucking, uh, just basically crying, just like, oh, I don't know what to do. It's so awkward. Who's uh, underrated? Uh, of course, it's just because he's being yelled at. Oh, actually, no, it's not going to Terry. It's not going to Terry. It's going to fucking Alfie Moon, who conned his way into about a thousand, about a thousand to two thousand five hundred pound. The fucking mental... It's not even... It probably is like three to it's four like grand. He, he genuinely had the choice. Like, oh, Alfie, come on, don't do it, you know? Don't do it. Ah, oh, bloody hell, I guess I've bloody won. It's like, ah. Oh. <laughs> fucking... Like, 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 Spencer is his brother, isn't he? That's the one we've seen Christmas all three, isn't it? Yeah, he left. And then... Yeah, yeah, that's Spencer. Um... Yeah, yeah. So like, he's going to fuck off to see Spencer. He's going to get paid. Yeah. And he'll obviously be back. Obviously, in this time, it's obviously an excuse to say, he's doing panto. He's doing panto. Probably. Um, probably. Well, well, he's not going to do fucking anything else in 2014, is he? Who needs slapping down? Oh, it, oh it's David. 
Yeah, it is David, isn't he? Well, oh, oh, oh Masood. I'd say Masood also needs slack. Like, yeah, sure, his life is crumbling in front of his eyes. But he is being a bit of a dick about it. And he, he did spaff Tamwa's money up the wall. Which I'm not a fan uh, of. Ah, uh, it's family. You do that sort of thing with family. Yeah, but you do. But, like, Tamwa, mate, they're not rich. You know, they they don't have money. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, and David, he's just been an annoying prick the entire time. Ah, oh, sorry, Masood, just someone had to tell you. Carol was screaming my name when she slept with you. Um, sorry, mate, we've been having lots of sex. We're like rabbits, honestly. Since you, since you were gone to do something, I think, I think your mum died or something. Ah, oh, she couldn't get enough. It's like, David, just fuck off. Also, we forgot to mention that David, uh, with, with Max signs the, uh, he gets half of the uh, autos. He and, bought into uh, the car, though. He bought into the car, and he immediately got a new fucking prefab for it. Yeah. And, and like, Max is like, where's all my stuff gone? I had me mug in there. Now, Lauren got me when, when, when she was only nine. And, like, he's like, ah, oh, we're business partners. And and he starts swinging around in the chair, and Max. Like, hmm. You, you, who, who else, David? Who else but you? Oh, that's David, all right. Um, whenever I think of David, I just think of fucking Flair for some reason. Um, but yeah, that's. Uh... I'm the only man who does that. Yeah, I'm yeah, the only literally man only can... you. Um... Like, like David Flair is a forgotten wrestler. Two thousand. He's not even a wrestler. It's a forgotten person of the 2000s, but I'm the only man who seems to be a fan of Because whenever I bring him up here, I'm like, oh, fuck's sake, not David. Ah, oh, fuck off, I mean, I'll, I'll do that whenever you mention wrestling on the EastEnders podcast. Uh, <laughs> I know. Should be used to it. But there we are. That's episode three of Who Done It? The Who Killed Lucy Beal podcast. If you did enjoy the show, make sure to tell us in the comment section, as it's always a good time. With us, put that fucking light back on. Um, it's always a fun time with us. Definitely enjoyed it more this week than I probably did the previous one, but then I'm pretty sure the previous one went on for longer than I expected it to anyways. It was always good fun in here, and I hope people are enjoying it. Make sure to tell us if you are in the comment section down below. Make sure to like the video and or subscribe to make sure we know that you are actually enjoying the content. As once again, this podcast is just an excuse to watch 2014, 2015, 2016 EastEnders. And I hope people take the time to take the time out of their day to say, fuck it, let's have a watch at this time period to remember what was good, let's remember what was bad, and ultimately just give them more time to EastEnders, because fuck it, why not? It's a good time. Um, We've been watching Wolford, I've been Ash, and I've been joined by Piggy. Yeah, I've been picky from watching Walford. Um, okay, now it's time to run through the fucking channels we have, baby. Are you ready, Ash? Well, did you know? Did you know that we have a wrestling channel called One More Match One A Two, where you will get us watching ECW, where we will also be doing another illusion, where we'll be in the year two thousand and six. Yes, the year two thousand and six. I know it doesn't make any sense, but shut up. It's ECW. Um, we also have a podcast where we might be in the year 2011, so about a few years before 2014, um, with a good, amount, a good friend of ours, Slater, and we have three platforms where you can donate to us. We have Koofy, or legally allowed to say Coffee, uh, Patreon, and YouTube. YouTube and Patreon are nearly enough the same, just yeah. t- Patreon has different tiers, and YouTube has just one tier. And if you want to support us, if you want to support us uh, by any means necessary, you can also join the Discord, you know, and recommend some stuff. Hey, watch this show, review this show, uh, and whatever else you want to do. You got any funny ideas you want us to do? Just shout it out in the Discord or on the Patreon. I've yeah. been Piggy from watching Watford. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.